If you are looking into buying cheap and safe FIFA coins, look no further than footcoinshop.net. They have the fastest service, an incredible loyalty reward system, and the best prices around. Use my creator code INCEPTION when you sign up for your account and get a 5% discount with your order. Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. I know I'm super late on this video. I think this was like two days ago, but um, yeah, apparently there was like actual deep dive pitch notes for FIFA and I just... Uh, I, it was funny, like a day or two ago, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I just never did it. <laughs> uh, motivation, motivation, you know. But uh, pitch notes, before we get started with this, let's just say, and I mentioned this in the gameplay trailer as well, even though in the gameplay trailer, they finally had good individual animations being added to the game, like some really cool stuff, some of them, right? Some of it. Um, the general feel of the gameplay probably not gonna be changed, right? Because of the inconsistent gameplay. So just mentioning that, because I gotta mention it every single time because you guys know how FIFA is, okay? So when it comes down to the pitch notes, let's take a look at some of the stuff. If you guys haven't watched the breakdown of the trailer and some of the new stuff that they added, be sure to go check out that video, okay? Um, all right, so let's go. So there's different things here. There's play style, attacking, defending across the pitch and additional changes, right? So we'll go with play styles first. First, <laughs> uh, play styles. I'm so Portuguese. I say first, you know. Uh, optimized by real world opta play styles. Uh, dimensionalize. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've never seen that word before. Dimensionalize. That's why I paused a little bit there. Hmm. Uh, athletes going beyond the overall range to bring to life the on pitch abilities that make players special. Each playstyle affects gameplay, giving players unique capabilities you'll see and feel that make their way of playing more authentic. Playstyles plus, plus, I was there like two different ones. There's a playstyles and then there's a playstyles plus. Enhance those signature abilities to a world-class standard. Think Holland's power shot or Sam Kerr's finesse shot, uh, reflecting elite players' ability to play at a level that few others can reach. Okay, so they actually explain them here. Power shot, who has it? A player who is known for taking powerful shots from outside the box. Outside the box? Bro, I don't even know if Holland scored that many goals outside the box. Has he? I think a lot of his goals come from inside the 18, man. Anyways, uh, gameplay effects, play style, performs power shots faster with increased speed. That's pretty cool. I'm okay with that. Anything that shoot the ball quicker, sure. It's like a pop shot, basically, in FIFA nowadays. Um, okay, so there is play style and play style plus. Gotcha. Uh, performs power shots much faster and with a significant increase in speed. So there is two. Good. Dead ball. A player who is known for being a specialist at taking set pieces. Uh, play style. Set pieces are delivered with increased speed, curve, accuracy, put ball trajectory preview line is longer. Um, the plus version is set pieces are delivered with exceptional speed, curve, and accuracy. Ball trajectory preview line is at maximum length. Chip shot. Your chip shot? Like, it's funny. You guys put that as a CPU AI trait. It's not a CPU AI trait. Watch the Vardy video, man. Like, it's... The animation is just different, bro. I'm telling you. It, 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 it makes your animations different. It's very important. Uh, performance chip shots faster and with greater accuracy. Gameplay effects play style plus performs chip shots with more quickly and exceptional accuracy. So maybe that's what it was when I saw the original gameplay trailer where like um, the uh, the chip shot would, would look like it kind of curved in, right? So that was pretty cool. Uh, finesse shots, uh, perform finesse shots faster with additional curve and improved accuracy. Performs finesse shots significantly faster with maximum curve and exceptional accuracy. I wonder how this works with like the green time shots, you know? Should be interesting. Power header, uh, performance headers with increased power and accuracy. Performance header with increased power and accuracy. Okay, cool. Passing, pings pass. Uh, through passes are more accurate. Swerve passes are delivered with more curve and precision passes travel faster to the destination. Um, okay, so it's all of these, but just like a better version of it. So that's, that's pretty interesting, actually. Passes travel faster along the ground without impacting the tapping or the trapping difficulty of the receiver for incisive pass. Passes travel faster along the ground without impacting the trapping difficulty of the receiver. Okay. Okay. Long ball pass. Lob and lofted. Uh, lob and lofted. Through passes are more accurate, travel faster, and are more difficult to intercept. I hope you guys don't have that same setting that you guys had for like for so many years, where you avoid the defensive player. Such a dumb 
a, such a dumb, dumb thing to add into the game. Avoid the player. So you do a pass and I'm blocking the area, but we're going to avoid the player. Sure. Hope you guys don't do that again. Tiki Taka. This is going to be a one. It's probably going to be mine. I'm not going to lie. Like just for the build up play and stuff. Uh, Jude Bellingham apparently has this in the trailer. They said that he did. Um, executes difficult first time ground passes with high accuracy using back heels when contextually appropriate. Short distance ground passes are highly accurate. So, okay, cool. Whipped passes. Uh, all crosses are highly accurate, travel faster with more curve. Interesting, interesting. Ball control, first touch. Uh, has reduced error when trapping the ball and is able to transition to dribbling faster with greater control. Okay, we'll see how that works because I hate when you guys add extra dribbling stuff that makes the game annoying to play with. So we'll see if this is like a huge thing. Um, maybe like w we have to take pressure into consideration. We'll see. And the type of pass you're making because if these guys take forever to just trap a ball like come on man uh fancy passes and shots perform with improved accuracy performance flare animations when contextually appropriate for flare uh press proven keeps uh close control of the ball while dribbling at jog speed and can shield the ball more effectively from stronger opponents uh rapid reaches his higher sprint speed while dribbling and it has reduced chance of error while running uh, sprinting or performing knock-ons so a lot of these are like very, very self-explanatory when they have the traits. Like there's, it's not like a, um, this one I'm, I'll, I'll be, it flare is like shots to perform uh, passes. Oh, it's the fancy. And then this one's like the skill moves, right? Okay. Perform unique flick skill moves. Okay. So that's a, like, it's like a, like a clown from back in the medieval ages, you know, when they go perform to the king and they're just like flicking stuff up, like, you know, so interesting stuff. Uh, higher speed when performing controlled sprint and performs wide turns while dribbling with more precision. Okay, yeah. Uh, but flick skill was defending. Oh yeah, this is defending one is the there's the wall one. Oh, that's the wall one. It's the block. Yeah. Uh, increased reach when performing blocks and improved ability to make a successful block. We'll see if that's like mostly like AI stuff. If it's AI stuff, then we'll, it just depends on how the attack works, honestly. Bruiser, greater strength when performing physical tackles, even greater strength when performing physical tackles. Okay. Um, Bruiser, it's for physical tackles. And then the wall one is going to be for successful tackles, successful blocks. Okay. Intercept, increased reach and improved chances of retaining possession of the ball when performing interceptions. Okay. Increased max speed of sprint to jockey and improved transition speed from jockey to sprint. Okay, that's going to be a big one, actually. Uh, slide tackle. Ability to stop the ball directly at their feet and performing a slide tackle. That's the new uh, mechanic. So that one's going to be a really big one for sure. Um, anticipate. Improved chances of standing tackle successful and grants the ability to stop the ball directly at their feet when performing a standing tackle. Yeah, I want all my players to have anticipate plus. Honestly. Um, okay, so on the attack, we have acrobatic. A player who tends to perform acrobatic passes, clearances, and shots. So performs volleys with improved accuracy and has access to acrobatic volley animations. Okay, so that, I guess that's going to be like Holland, like the one that he does against uh, Borussia Dortmund. Uh, performs higher jumps and has improved aerial physical. Okay, so aerial is like flying basically for headers. Trivella. Uh, contextually triggers outside of the foot uh, passes and shots. Your Trivella should, like, it shouldn't be as happening as much as it does nowadays. That thing is, like, insane. It's players like Modric, Quaresma, if you added, well, Figo in your game, but you guys make Figo horrible. Um, Relentless uh, reduces fatigue loss during play and increases fatigue recovery. Okay. Quick step accelerates faster during explosive sprint. Um, performs throw-ins with increased power to co cover greater distance. Goalkeeper far throw. Footwork. Footwork is what well. bag players will have increased reaction speed on one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, cross claimer bag players will have increased. Okay. Quick reflexes have increased reflex and reactions. Far reach are more effective at saving shots from outside the box. Oh. Oh, excuse me, it's like early in the morning. Uh, bag players will have increased speed while running. Rush out far reach. I wonder if they're going to do far reach for a lot of like the small goalkeepers because a goalkeeper like Kyle Walker for me personally is horrible because he's too small. You know what I mean? Like it's such an easy card to hit finesse shots um, from a distance. Okay, cool. So that's the play styles. <clears throat> Attacking. I, reading all this stuff is nonsense to me. I'm going to be honest with you because it's all about like what it is in the game and if we're any uh, 
if we if we known what it's like in the past few years it's all nonsense because they never fix inconsistent gameplay but still we'll see the individual stuff okay so precision passing uh precision uh pass allows you to bend and shape the perfect pass with manual precision this skill-based passing mechanic respects your accuracy when aiming at a target location the player receiving a precision pass will attempt to move toward the ball destination to perform precision pass you have a few options you press r1 plus triangle can be modified to a swerve pass with l2 lt okay so to do a swerve it's both of those buttons triangle okay that would feel natural actually that makes sense lt r2 or lt r1 yeah r1 lt r1 and then you do the pass okay and then R1, RX for a precision law pass. For precision law pass. Oh. Huh. Okay. The steam mechanic introduces more skill to pass than is designed so that players who can, who can carve out their own space and aim precisely are rewarded for it. Yeah, quote unquote rewarded for it, EA, because some people will just do random passes and then they actually don't see the play. Oh. How? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me just see this one specifically. When are you triggering this run? Okay, so that's already being triggered. Okay, so when you trigger the run, they make the run. Okay. Or when you trigger the pass, they make the run. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Like, people are probably going to do that randomly, to be honest with you. But let's see here. Okay, so this one. Da -da 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 -da. If you're controlling any of these two players and you make that pass, that's really stupid. He's controlling the right sided player, I think. Okay. If he's controlling the right sided player, that's fine because you're blocking that area. You make a pass in the middle. But it's it's tough because you guys do ID this and that. So you got to put the cursors on the head. So I need to see like who you're controlling. Because if this pass is making it through these two players like that, oh my goodness. What I like so far is that if, if, keyword, this guy over here is being controlled and these two guys don't make that interception, I'm not, I'm, I'm okay with that. Cause like, you don't, you need to block that general space. Fine. Whatever. Receiver moves towards the aim. Yeah, they do move towards the aim. Interesting. This is going to be a big mechanic for sure. When do you, when did when is it? this trip this one was triggered earlier no it's triggered again from the see that's interesting this this is gonna this is gonna be a huge mechanic actually see if you take out your target lock and you add this that's fine whatever you know what i'm saying i have to control this guy and then you know what i'm saying just stupid but this like it kind of makes sense a little bit like this is a mechanic that makes sense your target lock is so dumb i hate that mechanic so much I have to control this other player because you guys just don't want to make good attacking AI. But this is still somewhat attacking AI oriented because you're placing a pass and he, your attacker, has to register to your place pass. That makes more sense. Yeah. That's going to be happening a lot. So, you know what's good about this mechanic, actually, is that... Again, it depends on how the defending is, because if defending is horrible, this is going to be a really annoying mechanic to deal with, because the R-Trigger merchants are foaming at the mouth for this. But, yeah, that's that's interesting, because they do trigger it. They do trigger it when you activate it yourself. Right? Moment it's activated, he goes into it. That's an, that, Whoever thought of that, good for you. You have a brain. See, it's every time you trigger it, even the lofted pass. Yo, your chip shots look good, EA. Did you guys finally fix it? Yo, their chip shots look good, bro. And the trailer was good. Like, those chip shots don't happen consistently, man. We need to see when the game comes out. So, R1X, right? So, this is R1X. X, so, sorry. Because this they're showing the... This is R... Okay, sorry, because there's, there's two of them, so square. So it's a cross, but it's a driven cross. But it would be a precision lob instead. So it's not a driven cross now? So where, where do you guys put your driven crosses? I guess you have to hold L trigger for a driven cross. 
who knows um more skilled to pass in the design so that players can who can carve out their own space and aim precisely are rewarded for it yeah put this in and take target lockout honestly uh long passing and short passing with vision and composure contri uh, contributing to a lesser extent curve for swerve attempts okay these attributes increase precision law pass accuracy and the quality of precision ground passes increase okay so the passes are even better if you make those passes interesting um swerve on demand having the power to control more aspects of your player is a crucial pillar we focus on this year so the idea of swerve on demand was born and it allows you to curl your ground through and precision ground passes to achieve passes never before possible l2x l2 i want to do the playstation controls l2x swerve ground pass l2 okay so l2 does it l2 tri triangle does it and then r1 l2 r1 l2 swerve precision ground pass okay power of the pass must be above 40. The curve attributes is added to the passing quality calculation dictates how much curve the pass will have. Headers on demand. Are you confident that a quick header pass to start a counterattack is the best choice? Now you can request that with the headers on demand. To request the headers on demand. L2, R2 plus intended pass. To request a header on demand, are you calling that quick header pass to a start counterattack is the best choice? I can quick request the headers on demand. Players will attempt to make a header if the ball is above their feet from the ground. That's a cool new mechanic, actually. So it's kind of like it's kind of like you're it, you're chipping the ball to the player, and then if they're physical, they can kind of head it off so that a player can make a run. That's a cool mechanic. That's interesting because people do people do uh, that in real life. They do that in real life. They kind of like chip the ball a little bit and then they head it. Like I see that happening all the time. That's that's actually pretty cool. Um, other passing changes, input changes for passes, a driven through pass has moved to L1, R1 to LB, no. Driven through pass has moved to L1, R1 triangle, L1, R1 triangle. That's fine. Oh my goodness, so many new mechanics you have to learn, man. You have to remember all these like things, you know? It's all different. Um, driven lob, driven cross, L1, R1, square. Triangle, square for a cross. Driven, yeah, so I do it, so it's two of them. So driven cross, L1, R1. R1, L2, so driven, lofted, driven, lofted, driven, lofted. Lofted driven. That makes sense because R because it, it gets you, it's that feeling, you know what I'm saying? Like in, in your chest, basically. Uh, the the drivens are the top, which makes sense. And then the L2, which is your more flimsy button, is the lofted. So that's the best way to remember that. Okay. Um outside of the foot passes. Only players with Trivella play style can perform outside of the foot, swerving passes contextually. Uh L2 pass have to play serve on demand. Uh, okay. The following commands were removed to make room for the new precision passes. Driven law uh, through pass L1 triangle. Driven high driven crosses. Okay. Passes can now be cancelled by performing a variety of skill moves. Uh, added hundreds of new refreshed animations for headers, jostling passes, toe poke passes, slotting passes. Okay. Uh, controlling the ball, dribbling. This stuff, I honestly, like when you talk about the stuff EA, couldn't care less if you guys don't fix your inconsistent gameplay. Just saying. Okay. This is so annoying. Effort Dribble Touch uh, is a new mechanic in EA, uh, EA Sports FC that 20, allows you to quickly knock the ball in any direction and set up your next move. Uh, this is a great tool for moving the ball out of the path of your opponent's feet or take a defender by surprise with a controlled first touch when used as your first touch of the ball. This is fine, but again, it's it just depends on how the defense works because that one right there was really dumb. I'm going to tell you why, because you're forcing an animation. But it also looks like the defender is over committing a space. So that's why the force animation happens. Look, over commitment of a space. And you're because here's the thing, right? Because he's over committing into the space to the left and you're exiting to the right. So that is a skilled variable if the person himself is actually doing that. Right. But if this is like a forced animation where like you're defending properly and he still gets it, it's a little bit weird. But if it's like a directional thing, then that's fine. You know, so we'll see how you guys end up doing that. Um, an effort dribble touch can be performed when, while dribbling or as a first touch, making it uh, as a versatile attacking weapon.
Boom, boom. That's interesting. So this is actually something that you can do now. Touch, touch. Okay, that's new. That's going to be really effective if people overcommit against you. This is actually a cool mechanic too. All of these new dribbling and shooting at mechanics and stuff, man, like it just depends on the defending, like the manual stuff. The defensive AI couldn't care less, right? But the manual stuff, like it depends on that stuff. Um, R1 plus right stick. A quick flick of the right stick will result in a shorter distance knock on the ball while we're holding right stick to will knock the ball a greater distance. Effort dribble touch can be used to cancel passes and shots. R1, boom, R1, boom, R1, boom. Okay. Doom, doom. Do you have to flick it twice in this one? Orbit dribble. Oh, I've seen people complaining about like the things against the goalkeepers. I don't care how overpowered that is, bro. If it's a 1v1, you got destroyed. So couldn't care less. <laughs> Orbit drill allows you to move around the ball without taking a touch. Use this to adjust. Oh my goodness, they finally did this! Wow! Oh my goodness, they fi Guys, listen. This mechanic, I'm not even thinking about it for this little dribble thing that he's doing. Because this, I don't know who's doing Well, I mean, people can't, like, the, the little, you know... You know this mechanic? You know why? You know what I've been talking about for multiple years? You know when you hit a finesse shot, right? Or a power, like, no, not even that. Finesse shot specifically. You know how when you hit the finesse shot, I would always say like, yo, it would be nice if you could just control them switching the foot to hit the finesse shot. So imagine him doing this, but you're switching, but you're hitting into the finesse to the left side. Oh my goodness, finally you guys added this as a mechanic. I have to save this pitch nose because there's so many mechanics here that I have to learn. I have to save this one because this is a huge one, bro. So you hold L1, L1, and then you left stick. That's okay too. L1, L1, L2, left stick. And then you just rotate your body. Okay, cool. Oh my goodness, finally you guys added that, man. Holy. Uh, to perform controlled sprints, hold R1. Oh, you could do sharp touches right after the sprint. Is that how that works? Your players dribble and sprint speed attributes. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, so in your in your trailer, when you guys were using Vinicius Jr. and he was doing that touch, I was assuming it was R1, but it's not just R1. It's sprinting while R1, I think. To perform controlled sprint, your players dribble and sprint to attributes. Faster than a job, but slower than a fully sprinting. Control spin has more controlled touches. It doesn't. It doesn't say R trigger though. It's just. It's just holding R one. So that's like. So if I'm dribbling, so there's uh, dribbling and sprint speed attributes will affect your speed and control over the ball. Okay, so it's like they're running but dribbling. That's your new R one uh, dribbling basically. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Additional controlling the ball changes, back pedal traps added several new animations with increased directional coverage, head traps added multiple new head control trapping animations. Heading accuracy attributes now affect your head, your accuracy and control of head traps. Input changes, agile dribbling input has been changed to L2, R2, L2, R2, left stick. So fast, fast, you're moving quickly. It's R trigger L2, okay. I keep controlling and like switching the controls because it's like what I'm looking at here. Slow dribble input has been changed to L2 R1. Okay. Okay. Uh, shooting. There are several changes to shooting this year to improve responsiveness and adjustments were made to shot assistance types to reward player skill. Uh, precision shooting. Uh, for EA Sports FC 24, we took all the feedback we received on semi assisted shooting and we worked it into uh, what we now call precision shooting. This new shooting type can be enabled in the settings menu under shot assistance. As before, our goal is to reward players for their aiming ability with more consistent shot outcomes. Uh, precision shooting consists of three main elements, aiming reward, a vital part of the system where players are awarded with increased accuracy the closer they aim to the net. Uh, compared to an assisted shot in a similar position, the accuracy of the precision shot will be greatly increased. Aiming indicator, new aiming indicator under your player's 
when you take a shot it helps you understand where you're aiming uh this ender can be turned off and then train yeah no one's going to turn that off because if this shot is effective because every new mechanic you guys add is usually super effective so six yard box assist a new logic to assist first time shots near six yard box you don't need to be precise in the split second you have to get your shots off okay Headers on demand. The headers on demand. I want to see an object, like a, an, a like an example of that. Uh, players will attempt to make a header if the ball is above. Uh... Press L two R two circle. Do you sometimes cross the ball into the box and know that the best choice is to attempt a diving header? Now is with the passing, you can request that with headings on demand. Heading on demand, you can do L2, R2. So it's like a special shot, kind of. Yeah, I have to remember that one too. That's a new one. Okay. Uh, quick release shots. When tapping circle near the goal, your players will attempt to take the shot with the earliest animation possible for a very responsive shot when tapping it. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, power needs to be below 30. That's like usual. Needs to be requested within the 18 yard box. Anything outside the range will be a low shot. Um, advanced shot cancel shots can now be canceled. A variety of skill moves. After powering up your shot, you have a brief window to use the right stick to transition into a skill move. So this mechanic people were freaking out about, but this mechanic... Um, it already it already exists in a in a sense in this game. Um, have you guys ever used the fake shot pass? Fake shot pass is like a, it's almost like a it's almost like this in a way. Like you're you're doing two things in one. Fake shot pass is really good to kind of get some accuracy and face the net a certain way. So they're kind of like improving that part of the mechanic and making it significantly better with like different stuff. Guys, to be fair, a lot of this stuff is very interesting, but just again, it depends on a defensive stuff. So against the goalkeeper, couldn't care less if this is overpowered because that means you be the defense, right? But from what I'm seeing from this mechanic specifically, like this one right here, like that's going to be like really good to use against the defenders. So if I'm like in an angle over here in this general area and I'm doing a fake shot into a roulette so I can hit it to the near post, that's what I'm personally thinking of right is the stuff that you do against the defenders so this is clearly forcing animations out of the defenders and the goalkeepers here or the goalkeepers specifically so i'm just curious to see how it works against the defenders you know what i'm saying uh power shot animation you can now transition to a different shot type during the power shot animation by pressing l1 you can transition to a chip shot by pressing r1 you can tra transition into a finesse shot um okay so skill moves, we have added uh, new skill moves to the game and made some changes to existing ones. The following abbreviations will be used for controls, left stick, right stick, uh, ball roll, drag. Ball roll, drag, L1, flick, right stick, forward. Yeah, we have to remember that. We have to remember these ones when the game comes out, though. Drag back, turn. Drag back, turn. Hold L2, right stick back. Drag back, turn. Four stars. Flare nutmegs. L1 R1. Flick right stick direction. Flare rainbow. Hold L1. Plus right stick back forward. What? Mute the music. Your controlled McGeady cancel. Interesting. That's going to be super effective inside the 18. Okay. Wait a second. Let me see. Do you, is that is the same force animation? Hold on. Sorry. I'm going like way too far ahead here. Like right here. It depends. Uh, this one, it depends. I'll tell you this right now, EA, if someone's using second man press, if someone is using second man press and you do this, I don't mind it as much. But when you're controlling it and you're forcing an animation, I don't know how overpowered this is going to be. That's a FIFA Street thing because no player in real life is doing this. This is an interesting one.
This one you could work a near post angle too, because you're pushing the ball afterwards as well, or a finesse shot. Yeah, those are interesting actually. Um, attacking position, positioning PlayStation 5. Okay, so this is new stuff. Um, uh, diagonal runs. Players will now attempt to make more decisive diagonal runs to cut through gaps in the defensive line or hold the position on side. I wonder if they added this. I know they watched the reviews and stuff for some of the players. Um, there's always like a mechanic or an attacking AI that I personally always tell people, like where I say this is like the best attacking AI. It's when the players do the diagonal runs specifically like when you when they do diagonal runs that's how you know they have the best one right so words wise that's great so we'll see how that works uh players may may position themselves higher inside the box while attempting to find a passing lane to empty space dynamic defensive line players will adjust to accommodate wing backs making attacking runs they will shift or drop to cover their space while the wing backs are out of position <clears throat> If one wing back is pushed up on the attacking position, the rest of the defensive line will shift to cover and play in the shape of a three back. Um, if both wing backs push up to attacking position, defensive midfielder is a drop between defenders. The two center backs will increase the width to allow the defensive to drop between them and play the three back. Okay. Defensive actions uh, to give my players. Uh, advanced defending is a new saying that changes the layout of the defending buttons. The goal is to give players a choice of what defensive action they want to launch. Press X to request a shoulder challenge or seal out. Press circle to request a stand tackle. Okay, so this is very important that they added as well. Because when I used to do defensive reviews, I used to always show you guys a specific mechanic that when you are running up against an attacker, and this was random, right? So they have now adjusted two different things, right? They have now adjusted the one random variable with trying to hit a finesse shot with your strong foot rotating your body. And now they've added another one that is a consistent control where instead of you pressing the tackle button while running, and sometimes it was 50-50, sometimes your player would just tackle the air and you were done, right? It was a dumb mechanic, but it like this mechanic is very, very, very important, okay? So this shoulder challenge or seal out mechanic, it happened when you press the tackle button. So if you press circle or B, right, your player would be more aggressive to push towards the attacker, right? But you have to kind of like, it was hard to explain because you have to like feel it out. It would make them more aggressive and literally faster to do that. So now they have it as a specific command, which is interesting. But this press X thing, guys, let me tell you. If your mechanic, if your gameplay is still unresponsive online, I don't want to make a pass when I'm doing a barge out tackle because this is the same situation as me flicking the right stick with my defender and you guys doing a push touch. So, you know, adding this is cool in a theoretical world where like your mechanics and your gameplay was at its best all the time. You know what I'm saying? More defensive improvements. Uh, new animations for seal outs and shoulder challenges in the front to increase the usefulness in situations where these mechanics happen. Defensive positioning, zonal defense. When using a depth higher than 45, players will attempt to mark opponents higher up the field and close to the ball. Process of cutting off passing, uh, possible passing lanes. Finally, because you guys have your default to park the bus angle, it's so stupid. Oh, I'm going to use 100 depth, but my players are still going to let the guy uh, pass around the back, uh, pass around the back of his, uh, on his side forever. <clears throat> Pressure tactic changes. Oh boy. Hold on. When, when the ball is close to the sideline. When the ball is close to the sideline, the defenders will attempt to close down the ball carry to reduce the near passing and support options. Oh, okay, I was about to say. Uh, this can leave for the far side of the pitch open to attacking opportunities. Pressure tactic changes. When using pressure tactics such as constant pressure, pressure after possession loss, or pressure on heavy touch, a player's marking tightness will be more varied. So not all players will be tightly marked. Who did this? Who did this? Someone who has brain cells at the studios. Who, who did this? Someone who actually plays the game actually did this? Wow. Look at that, man. Someone with actual brain cells. Because it's not... You're, you're not stupid this time. Because you didn't just do this. Right? You didn't just do that. You also did this. So there's a variable there of switching your tactics... 
to mark them higher up the field. And then you have this, not just this, because if you just did this, your brain cells would still be low. The third thing that needed to happen in this little area that you have here is the second man press. That's that's one of the things I need to be able to see. That was one of the things because you guys don't mention that here. The two together is good, though. If it was just one, it wouldn't make sense, bro, because this is what the rats want by itself. And this is also what the rats want by itself. But these two together, someone at the studios are using their brain cells a little bit. But the third one is a second man press. I don't know. That's not here. So that's the concerning parts because that that's part of these two things here. Anyways, when using a uh, pressure tax such a constant pressure, uh, the goal for the change is to prevent the flow of the game from completely changing when one user switches to pressure tactics, allowing the attacking team to make smart passing decisions to break the pressure. Good, because it's stupid that in the last how many, who knows how many years, someone activates a pressure tactic. Okay, guys, I can't play the game anymore, basically. Good. The following changes have been made for goalkeepers in EA Sports FC 24. New push deflex. When the goalkeeper cannot catch the ball, they will now attempt to push a, a shot deflection into safer areas or out of play. Good. I hate when people take a shot in a... It depends, EA, right? Because it's like, okay, if they take a shot from like a good angle, but they're like some... Most of the times they don't. When, they, when people take shots in horrible angles and then they get the deflection from taking a bad angled shot... Oh my goodness, it irritates the soul out of me. But these are words. These right here are specifically words. This is yet to see in game. You have to see this in game. <clears throat> tip overs. Improved uh, detection of a lob trajectory shots to use tip over saves and improve results of these saves. Animation refresh. New and refresh animations for saves with feet. Diving saves, deflex and reflex saves. Player switching. Player switching allows you to customize the switching to your preference. Right stick switching sensitivity gives you control over what is more important when performing a right stick switch, the distance of the player or the angle that was inputted. Uh, when adjusting the sensitivity for right stick switching, the higher the sensitivity, the more the games, the game will respect your right stick input. When selecting the next player, the lower the sensitivity, the more likely the system will select a player in closer proximity, even if your right stick input is not pointed directly at them. Th this is concerning. I'm gonna tell you why this is concerning because EA devs, if you guys watch the podcast that I did with Kurt and you watch that segment of me showing him good right stick switching and good L1 switching, that switching is already perfectly fine. When you are adding something like this, that's concerning because it's almost like you're trying to compensate for your inconsistent gameplay. That's what it feels like, okay? For the online experience because you already had good switching, but you just didn't have it on a consistent level in the online experience. Even when the gameplay was at its best, it wasn't consistent. But if you watch it, guys, do me a favor because you guys are listening to this, right? Go watch that podcast and just skip to the part where I show him the passing and he starts freaking out. Just that part specifically, okay? So this is almost like you're compensating for the, your inconsistent gameplay, to be honest with you, because you already had the good switching. It exists in your game and you just didn't get it all the time, okay? So that's a little bit more concerning. Next player, not concerning. I know it's going to happen. You guys are not going to fix it. Come on. Whoever works on that, you're clueless. Clueless. Next player switching preference nearest to ball. Uh, prefers players that are close to the ball, even if they may be slightly behind the uh, current dribbler. Goal side. Uh, players prefer uh, players that, excuse me, prefer players that are on the goal side of the ball. Goal side of the ball, even if they have maybe. Okay, so there's like different ones here. Interesting. Interesting. Across the pitch, and what's the last one here? Additional changes. Okay. Across the pitch, set pieces increase lob pass power uh, curved and dip to provide more options on crossing the ball in from deep free kicks. Uh, power curve dip for shots from free kicks to allow for more shot heights. With I just want you guys to fix the camera angle for it, man. The camera angle for it sucks. I can't even see if I score properly or not. That that's like. I don't know, whoever did that had low brain cells, man. That's just stupid. It was like that for the whole year, too. All you guys have to do is just fix the camera. Like, for like, you could have done a quick patch for that, honestly. For sure you could have. Penalty kicks. Increase the save zones for goalkeepers from 3 to 5 in order for more authentic decision-making required from the goalkeeper and penalties. Last year, goalkeepers and penalty kicks needed to select one of three zones to save a goal. Left, center, and right. Now, goalkeepers will need to select from five zones to save a goal. 
Top left, bottom left, center, and top right. Okay, this is a little bit weird. Like, I, I understand why you're adding it. Okay, I get it. But a goalkeeper in real life, when they are diving to the right, like if they're actually diving, they're going into the middle every time, but they're either going to try to do a save to go bottom or top. A lot of the times. This 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 will be an interesting one. I have to feel this one out. This is the words wise this is a little bit weird because you're doing it under the assumption that the person taking the shot is perfection. Like they always hit the top left. They always hit the bottom left. There is that variable in real life where they try to hit that strike, but they're not they don't get it off. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it depends on like the penalty stats as well when it comes to that specifically. Yeah. Because to be honest with you, the way that you had your penalties right now is kind of okay. Because if someone wants to save a shot directly to the top left, if a person takes a good penalty with a person that has good penalty stats, they would have to slightly move the goalkeeper and then dive to save it. But if they slight, if they if they hit it with like lower power and they hit it to that side, then they would save it. You know, like like I didn't mind the penalty system you guys had now, but this one might be a little bit strange. We'll see how that works. Not really like a big deal. This one's not like I'm like completely against, right? Like it's whatever. <laughs> New penalty kick avatar runs can be applied to avatars and player careers. New penalty kick animations, competitive uh, settings, master switch. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. As a refresher, competitive settings are mandatory in some modes, but are available for all players in every mode of EA Sports FC24 um, if they wish to play with them. The competitive settings master switch has found a new home in the settings menu as a preset. Selecting the competitive presets will adjust only the settings required for said modes. Here's a list of modes that will automatically turn on competitive presets. Ultimate Team Rivals, Ultimate Team Champions, Ultimate Team Draft, Online Seasons, Co-op Seasons. You guys have the same game modes again, eh? You guys have the same game modes again? This better be like, like, listen, man. This, this better be a thing where you're showing these three because you haven't showed your ultimate team menu stuff and you've added the tournament mode back. This better be because if you guys are stupid enough to do these game modes again for this type of game, you're actually idiotic, man. I hope you guys added another game mode, man. I hope. Another year of me telling you how stupid you are for not adding another game mode. Oh my goodness, man. EA, do you guys not play your game? People will remain in the lower divisions if you do this again. People will actually play division rivals normally if you have a tournament mode like the World Cup. Three qualifying games, and then you go through the rounds. They will actually play rivals normally if you do that. Why are you doing these game modes again? I don't care if you have these three. These three are fine. Listen, if they have these three modes, but they added a new mode and we just don't know yet because they haven't shown the ultimate team stuff. I don't care. But from, from what I'm seeing from here right now, if it's just these again, they're actually so dumb. Anybody that's against what I'm saying right now are clueless because you guys, you guys do not play this game normally if you, if you are against what I'm saying. Because these game modes, the balance doesn't make sense. The level up promo was garbage because of this balance right here. Because the only place that people would have done it is in squad battles. People will remain in the lower divisions to do their objectives. You think they care about getting these pack rewards? No, bro. We'll see. I want to see. Because if you guys did it again, you're actually idiotic, man. Ultimate team friendlies, online friendlies, a competitor master switch is on by default. However, is not mandatory. Advanced defending. You could select between tactical or advanced defending for the competitive preset enabled. Rules. Referee uh, strictness. Add a new system to differentiate. Uh, differentiate between the referee strictness options. Now referees of different strictness will call offsides, push pulls, and many more types of fouls differently. Better tackle detection using a new fixed system to better attack the tackle. Okay. General improvements, uh, improved back, breakaway logic, and last man, ba last man back situations to make better foul decisions. 
player movement. New avatar runs, humanization, upper body on him, uh, upper body injury animations. Referee when the ball is cleared off the goal line. This is like uh off like this is just like animation things. Uh, players will now play new animations when unable to stop before colliding with ad boards for more realistic anticipations for collisions. That's cool. Uh, movement, preserve, uh, everywhere, goal keepers preserve, preserve their movement and while, uh, when diving and falling to the ground to bring more authentic motion to the game and new animation, CPU, AI. Uh, we'll use a new play styles and mechanics added, such as precision to have serve on pass, shield, pushback, and quick release shots. We also made several improvements to the strategies. Uh, Evolve Engine. Add a new stats seen in broadcasts. Okay. <laughs> practice arena scenarios. Practice some arena move. Add and remove players to create scenarios. Do, 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 do. PS5 enhanced haptics. Uh, haptics off for PS5. No, that's, I turned that off. Skill games, precision passing. Okay, cool. That's it. Um, Pitch notes wise. If we live in a theoretical world where you don't have inconsistent gameplay, some of these mechanics are actually really cool. Uh, we don't live in that theoretical world, so you're probably not going to fix inconsistent gameplay yet again, to be fair. But let's talk theoretical content creator inception. Some of these mechanics are pretty cool, right? Some of the first touches, um, some of the skill moves look really nice. I like being able to shoot and then go into a skill move like you're like, like some people do that in real life, like they're about to shoot and then they go for like a roulette or something or shoot into an elastico. Like, that's pretty cool. As long as it's not like a one, like a, a cut animation. I hate the cut animations. Like if it's like into a one, that's kind of cool because they do that with uh, KDB in the trailer when they did like that body faint into the three Vela. Like that was a one animation, which was pretty nice. But yeah, some interesting stuff. I can see why you guys want me to read the, uh, the pitch notes for this type of stuff. So but those game modes, man, if you guys didn't change the game modes again, you're really stupid. Guys, hopefully you guys enjoy this video today. I'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.